Hey everybody, welcome to the latest edition of Volley. I'm Carolyn April, and as always, looking for my good buddy, Seth Robinson. Seth. Hey, how are you doing? Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah, we're kind of in the thick of it now, aren't we? We are. We do our, you know, Volley Days episode with Randy, but now we're we're really in the thick of it. This is our, our last episode of the year. I know. We're feeling merry and bright, so. We are. I got a Christmas tree yesterday, so, you know, that's a... That's usually the signal that I'm in the holiday mode as I go get a tree. So. Just the just the two of you putting it up now, right? No, uh, no elves assisting. Yeah. You well, you know, um, it's up the tree. It's not decorated, so it's in the stand. That's the hard part: getting it in the house, getting it in the stand. And uh, but one of the elves will be home in a few days, and she's going to help decorate. So she asked if we would wait. I said okay. Yeah, I think we're going to do something similar. Like get the tree up. Ours is not real like yours, but get it up. Make yeah. sure the lights are all working, whatever. But then I might do the lights. That that might happen because she doesn't care about that. It's more that, the yeah. yeah. No. Um, no. So yeah, I think I think we're going to do something similar, but we're we're moving a little slow on the old decorating thing this year. Uh, since my elves have been older, we have gotten slower and slower and slower every year. It's not quite the same as uh, yeah. when, they're, when they're little kids, but, um, still yeah. it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to, it's less frenetic. Let's put it that way. For sure. Yeah. You can actually enjoy it a little bit, yeah. the parts that you want to enjoy. So you got it. You got it. Well, we are going to do a year in review. Here we are at the end of the year. This is our last one of the year. And so, as always, we want to kind of look back and talk about some of the big things that we can think of that happened. A lot of big things this year. I think some of the biggest stories of the year, technology was probably not the most important part of those stories, but I think we can hit them and, you know, kind of talk about whatever the impact on technology was um, or or whatever else might be might be happening. So do you want to kick things off? Sure. I think you're spot on when you say, you know, some of the biggest things that happened this year, you can't technically define them as something that falls into the technology topic area or bucket. But as we have learned and discussed on Volley all year and all in previous years, technology sort of bleeds into everything. So there's there's tangential connections to all. Um, a couple of things, um, I think, that we cannot not uh, mention is um, coming out of the pandemic, the beginning of the year, not really sure where we were going to head. Um, and then we saw the economy kind of crumble a bit toward the middle of the year. And I think that the economy, inflation, supply chain, um, supply chain, you can kind of tie back to some of the things that are going on globally, the war in Ukraine. I, I should mention that that was a big thing that started. Yeah, still in is. Yeah. Still is a big thing, and that was a huge thing that happened in the beginning of the year in March timeframe, and that has impacted the supply chain and, and energy prices and gas prices and all of that. And every single one of those macroeconomic things have had a trickle down effect on the workforce, the workplace, and technology has either been oh, been able to help um, mitigate some of the some of the issues there. Uh, or it has been impacted negatively. And so it's been kind of a mixed bag, I would describe it as some of the bigger events that happened this year and what their impact has been on our particular world. Yeah, I, I mean, I think those are the first two things that come to mind for me too, or, you know, the war in Ukraine and then inflation concerns yeah. uh, that have been happening in the US and around the world throughout the year. And you know, like we said at the top, you know, those, those things go far beyond technology. I mean, certainly the war has a lot of, you know, humanitarian concerns and issues going on that have nothing to do with technology. Um, but I, I think from an economic standpoint and, and impacting the technology industry a little bit, the, the common thread in both of those kind of is the party's over, right? I mean, I, I think that the, the war in Ukraine, you know, a lot of people were saying when that got started that we used to have this concept of like, Europe is has kind of found its way. Europe has peace now, mm -hmm. and that went away. And then with inflation, I think there was this sense of like, yeah, we know how to run the economy. We know how to fine tune it. We know what all the levers are. And then that got out of whack. And, and yeah. again, you know, a lot of it was probably due to the pandemic. Um, but I think there were other factors, you know, at play too. And, and so many of these things are cyclical and, and you can't just always assume that something is going to be that way forever. Um, but I, I, I feel like that was 
kind of a shock to people's systems of sort of mm -hmm. saying, we used to think the world was this way. And you know, now, like you said, we're coming out of the pandemic, but it seems like the world isn't the way that we thought. And, and I think for a lot of businesses, you know, we talked about this last time with Todd, and I think we're going to talk about it more to kick off the new year. Businesses and technology, I think now have to grapple with what does it mean if these things are over? You know, what does it mean if supply chains are going to be a little bit more fragile? What if it means if, if prices are going to go up and down, if we don't have the interest rates that we, the low ones that we used to get used to, um, you know, yeah. like all the other concerns that come from those big major events, I think those are some of the things that are going to kind of reverberate for technology and businesses over the next year. Oh, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I kind of jotted down some notes before we started today. And one of the things is that we have grown accustomed for at least the last decade or so of kind of living sky high, low, you know, low inflation, easy to borrow, easy to take chances with your business, um, all of that. And it really, you know, the technology industry took off every, you know, there's just it's been a, a, a quite a really nice ride for the for the last 10 years. And yeah, we've seen since the pandemic and then especially this year with a lot of the things that we've just discussed that happened in the world. Um, I don't want to say a crash to earth or anything like that, but it was, there's definitely been a sobriety introduced this year that I think the businesses have to take a look at. And you can see it to, tr to, to turn it back to technology. You can kind of see it in some of the, the more cutting edge, hot things that we've discussed in technology. Um, they're having a little bit of a, a reality check today. Think about what's gone on with crypto. Um, and we could discuss that, but that's a big story. You know, something that supposedly had a ton of promise is now looking really shaky and bad. Um, something like blockchain, which is part of the crypto thing. Like, you know, should, you know, is this the next big thing or maybe not anymore? Uh, all of that virtual reality in the metaverse. We talk about that exhaustively. And I think there's lots of potential there, but we haven't seen it kick into high gear. And now as we see people doing a bit of a reality check with business, what happens to all those ambitious types of innovations and, and plans that people have? Are they going to revert back to um, sort of less ambitious goals in terms of what they're going to do in the coming years? or forge ahead, what things die, what things stay alive. I think it's kind of thrown a lot of things into um, uh, just up in the air. Yeah, I definitely wanted to zero in on the crypto one that you brought yeah. up. I think for me, you know, right here at the end of the year, that was a big, huge one with FTX crashing. Yeah. Um, but even before that, you know, the, the crypto markets were kind of plummeting. And I, I think that going way back, you know, crypto, blockchain, distributed ledger, all of that, was kind of a thing with a lot of people saying, this is going to be amazing. This is the next new thing. And a lot of other people saying, what's the product? What, what are we talking about here? Yeah. And I, I, you know, the reality is probably somewhere in the middle, you know, we've said for a long time that blockchain and things like that are probably closest to a protocol like you would have with the internet and probably not that there was nearly as much focus or that the discussion was nearly as robust, but like, I can imagine when TCP IP, you know, first hits the scene, everyone's like, what is this? Yeah. What are we doing? We're transferring information from here to there. Like, what can I do with that? And it did turn into something. Um, but certainly not every company grabbed that protocol and started doing something with it. It had to be a standard. It had to be something that was adopted by a lot of people. And then you could start building on top of it. And, and I still feel like that's the way that blockchain could go. But all of the noise around the attempt to build products, specifically cryptocurrencies, you know, on top of it, yeah. I think has given it a little bit of a black eye for now. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think um, it will be interesting to see whether things rev up and, and adoption revs up around those things or, you know, like I said, what, what survives and thrives and what you know, what doesn't. And I, you know, I, right now I wouldn't place a bet on crypto in any way. I can't call it. I don't know, but um, it's interesting to see what's happened with that. And that kind of gets me to another topic, which would be social media and platforms like that. So obviously the, the Twitter situation is, is one that we've alluded to and has been a big news story in the, in the past um, few months. Uh, and, but, but the toll, I've even read an article that said something about Instagram, like going by the wayside, people are thinking that that's going to be a no more thing. And I'm curious, not about those specific platforms, but about the medium in general, like 
have, has it flamed out? You know, I wonder, or is it going to take a new form? Um, and, and, and as it pertains to business, not just the social uses that we all use in our consumer lives, but social media have become a part of marketing and ways that uh, businesses position themselves and communicated with customers. And I, I wonder what sort of long-term or short-term impact some of this shakeup is going to have. Yeah, I mean, I think that's another one that I'd love to dig into as we kick off the year and as, as we start thinking about where are some of these things going, yeah. because looking back, I agree with you, it feels like another one of these things where it sort of feels a little bit like the party's over, like, yes. okay, that ran its course, it was interesting, some of it turned into something, but a lot of it didn't, and what are we doing with it, what's it, what is it good for, I think there could be answers there. And and to say the party's over is probably a little bit pessimistic, maybe a little bit um, of an exaggeration. I'm still there. I'm still partying. It's still going on. We're yeah, here. a lot of people are definitely still partying. And I, and I think something is going to continue. You know, things aren't over. But I think to your point, what is it? What, what are the pieces that are going to continue? And how do they get refined? I think that just rushing up to scale and then maybe crossing your fingers for advertising is probably not going to be a business model that every startup in the world can latch on to. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so what comes next? And again, I, I think that we've got, you know, a plan to dive into that question of what comes next, you know, next year, but looking back for sure, it feels like we've arrived at that question. Yeah. And I think to get away from the, you know, the party's over, maybe one positive, and, and this is might seem counterintuitive, but I was thinking about the workforce that, um, this year and people in technology jobs and, um, again, has been riding a pretty high wave for about a decade or so. And then you've seen all these headlines in the last quarter or so about layoffs, but mainly at technology industry companies like the social media companies that we just referenced, but other companies. But if you dig down a little deeper, what we're seeing in some of the data is that tech jobs in other industries, technology specific jobs are still in very high demand. And I thought that was a good takeaway from 2022 is that we may be seeing some pockets of, you know, mass layoffs in the tech industry and among jobs, uh, companies that may have been really fat to begin with in terms of the number of employees that they had, but that the strength of demand around uh, for high skills in, in tech jobs is, is really still there and is seems to be pretty strong as we ride out the rest of this year. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good one in terms of, you know, things that happened this year, because I think you and I both fielded an awful lot of media calls on that question yeah. um, of saying like, Hey, we're seeing layoffs by tech companies. What does this mean for the tech workforce? And, you know, our answer was the same for a lot of it. And I think we talked about it on the podcast here. I think I wrote about it uh, on CompTIA's blog that these are two different things, right? Yeah. You know, there's the tech industry and you've got companies in the tech industry that employ all kinds of workers, you know, technology people, but also, you know, marketing people, salespeople, HR, finance, everything that a normal company would have. And if their plans don't go the way that they think they're going to, then they're going to have to make cutbacks. And that's going to be across all the types of employees they have. And that's a very different thing from every company in every industry needing technology workers, which our tech jobs report still shows is going strong. Uh, and it probably won't go forever. You know, if, if we do go right. into some kind of a recession next year, you know, there probably will be cutbacks across the board and people won't just keep hiring technology professionals, you know, for forever and ever. But it is very resilient and it has been very resilient. And uh, the reasons for that are something completely disconnected from some of the struggles that we see with companies in the technology industry that made big bets based on things that they had seen during the pandemic or based on the way they thought the future was going to go. Uh, and those bets, you know, haven't paid off, uh, not yet. And so there has to be adjustments. Yeah. I'd say the other thing we see with the workforce is that it is not going to go back to the way it was. And we've discussed that before, so we don't need to discuss it ad nauseum, but I think 2022 was the year we were gonna see how that played out. You know, um, you can go back to the office now if you want to. Will companies make you? Some have, but I think we've learned, I think we are learning that um, kind of a hybrid mode for how workers are going to engage with their um, physical workspaces is going to be the, 
norm of the day, unless something radically changes in the years ahead. But I think that was something that kind of shook itself out in 2022 as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It'll be interesting to see, you know, how the how the new year changes that because I, I mean, I think we've seen some things through this year that were a little bit of a surprise. I mean, even the holiday weekend shopping um, stories that I saw were that, you know, people were out in droves, right? And it's not just, oh, we can do online shopping so we don't actually need to get to the mall anymore. Like yeah. people still want that. There are still reasons out there. And so what exactly does that turn into, especially for companies as they're considering their workforce? Um, for me, another one that I had jotted down was the merger of Kaseya and Datto. Um, that oh, was yeah. a pretty big that one. I on my list too. Yeah. Some, yeah. Pretty big one in our industry. Yes. And I mean, I think that on the one hand, it was a signal of sort of the direction that things are going that like, you know, we, we've had growth and so there's going to be consolidation. So even though these were two, you know, pretty sizable companies, you know, they came mm -hmm. together to try to form something bigger. And then on the flip side, um, you know, that coming together was a little bit fraught um, from all reports. And so I think that kind of just highlights the challenges and the complexity that we have here that, you know, technology is something that's growing more complex and managing that and providing it is starting to reach into a lot of things. And so beyond like the way that you would merge cultures, you know, when two companies come together, um, trying to put together two big pieces like that, uh, even if that's the direction that the technology industry is going, mm -hmm. um, it can be a pretty big challenge. Yeah, it is. And, and the ripple effect it has on, on so many, because we're so in interconnected, um, the, ch the technology channel. Um, so anybody who, you know, two vendors merge, then downstream, every channel partner from both groups gets affected. Any distributors they use are affected. Then obviously that bleeds into customers. One of the things I noted this year, and we've been seeing this for a little while, is that uh, channel companies, so the indirect channel of many of these vendors are starting to get a little more leverage vis-a-vis -vis their vendor. Um, whereas the vendor was always in charge and dictated terms. This year saw a couple of instances where the indirect channel was able to bite back a little bit. And one was with Kaseya. There, the Kaseya had a, you know, a, a mandate um, around its for its MSPs that they had to sign three-year contracts, not to get into the weeds here or not. But it was something that in years past, they might have complained about the channel, but that was it. They accepted it this year. They complained enough and the, the situation was reversed. Similarly, Microsoft had instituted some new certification program for its partners around cloud that was not greeted very well. And after listening to their many channel partners, the Microsoft reversed course. So it's it's we've been seeing it in the data a little bit, but the the kind of the hierarchy of how these companies are working together is leveling off a little bit. And um, and I've seen. You know, a lot of channel companies have a little bit more leverage when they are dealing with the relationships that they have with vendors. And I think in the end, that bodes well for the end customer, um, because it is the channel partner that ultimately is dealing with the customer on a day to day basis. So if they feel like they've got a little bit more stake in the game and a little more in charge um, of, of how they're going to conduct business. I think that bodes better for the customer. So that was something I noticed in 2022. Yeah, it feels like another one of those things where all, all of these things that we talked about, it's like the world has changed, right? And yeah. it looks a lot like it used to look, but some really important pieces are different. And so you can't just keep doing the same thing. I mean, the, the trend that we had in our Outlook report that you wrote up so well about, you know, business as usual is going to get a reality check. Yeah. I mean, I think that's one that we just keep returning to because it feels like it is going to apply in so many ways. And I think there are a lot of challenges for businesses, for workers, for governments, for, for a lot of people now to kind of pick up the pieces, you know, from this year in the past two or three years and sort of say, what are we building now? You know, like uh, my yeah. kids, my elves, they always kind of live act this one meme that they see where like, something goes great and then there's a bad side to it and it keeps going back and forth. And so there, you know, it's kind of like this year was like the pandemic's over. Yay. Yeah. But we have inflation. Oh, yeah. but then there's this and then there's this. And it's like, there's a lot of things going on. And what does that whole thing look like when you put it back together? You know, I, I think 
everyone through the pandemic was so hopeful for just this return to normal, right? And yeah. let's get back to the way things were. And there are a lot of pieces that are back to the way that they are, but there are some pieces that are never coming back. And I think this year really highlighted that. And again, I, I think we're gonna dive into what that means in some of the first episodes next year. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was a, it was an interesting year. I don't know if I would say it was good or bad. Um, interesting could mean either one. It was a very adult year, I would put it <laughs> for a lot of, for a lot of people. Yes. The ping ponging back and forth is pretty much how life is. Right. So I think, um, for those who hadn't been experiencing that now they realize, you know, just things might be good right now, but they might not be tomorrow. It's like the weather can change all the time. So maybe that was good for everyone to get a bit of a reality check. The other thing is it can be exciting as we look forward in that, maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have a time where you sit at the table and there's nothing on it and you say, you know, what do we want to set this table with right now? So everybody needs that kind of moment where they can start over and, and or stop doing things the way they used to be doing or stop, you know, this is the way we've always done it at work. And so we keep doing it this way. Hey, you know what? Blow it up if you if you have to and, and see what happens next. And I think that um, there are people thinking that way in business today that, you know, maybe it's now the time to, you know, try something new. Yeah, yeah. I, the the last thing from this year, very, very locally is, you know, CompTIA went through uh, some, some changes and we took on some new projects and there's been some churn, but through it all, we've been able to hold on to our producer, Andrea McMillan. Andrea, I think this is our first full year with you, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and uh, yeah. it has been great. We are so glad to have you behind the controls. Do you want to jump on and share any thoughts from the year or any well wishes for all of our listeners out there? You're always putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, we wish, uh, um, this has been great. I have loved working with you guys, love producing these shows. I think the content is great and I look forward to next year. So hopefully I'll stick around. <laughs> oh yeah, we hope, we yeah. hope so. I mean, yeah, we're going to have to talk to us so. if there's any, any different plans, but yeah. I think we've got a lot of exciting things planned for next year. I've mentioned a couple of times the, the series that I think we're going to kick off with. We've got a couple other ideas, you know, maybe some new segments in the works. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned, everyone. Um, we're, we're hoping for great things. And, you know, again, Andrew, we're so grateful to have you behind the controls for us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Making it all work for us. All right. Well, all right. Seth, it's been real. Yeah. 2022 is in the books. We're getting right. close calendar wise, but um, it's been another great year doing Bali as always with you. And I hope you have the best of holidays. Yeah. Same to both of you. We will see you next year. All righty. Bye guys. Bye guys. See you next year. Bye.